Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this series of videos, I'd like to show you about how you how to use uh, solid body parts and assembly design. And uh, you'll find that when we go through this uh, these uh, you know, these videos demonstrating this technique, you'll see that it's very similar to in context modeling uh, or assembly modeling. And the thing about in context assembly modeling, if you're not familiar with it, is it gives you the ability within the assembly environment, kind of a top down approach, as SolidWorks calls it, to, to be able to design within the assembly environment, creating relationships with the assembly, or within uh, or with the parts that are associated with that assembly, which is okay. Uh, you know, if you're organized about this and you're able to track a lot of this, it uh, works out pretty well. In some environments, it works out real well. But sometimes, uh, you do lose uh, track of uh, some of the parts that are within the assembly and uh, sometimes these uh, relations and uh, in context relations that are in there can get broken and can get a little tricky and hard to track and follow. So uh, as an opposition to that, uh, using solid body parts and assembly design I find is a real easy and workable solution to that. So let me show you uh, some, uh, just as an introduction here, let me show you how to, uh, uh, some in context assemblies that I put together and how they work and then I'll show you how to uh, do solid body modeling after that. So this is a real simple assembly I put together. Now what we have here essentially is a, uh, an initial part that was inserted in the assembly and a part that I started modeling on top of that. This is in regard to a crane that we're going to be seeing in a, uh, in a uh, later video. So what we have here is I deliberately made this part missing and this kind of shows you the problems that you might have within context assembly uh, design here. Um, I have a choice here, I can browse, browse for the file or I can suppress these components. And I think for now, just for some demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and suppress this. So what happens is the, the old part disappears. And you can see the, the assembly uh, feature manager design tree over here. The initial part in here that I called base is missing. And the in-context uh, flange that's on top of that is just sitting there. And you know it's an in-context assembly. When you look over here, you can see next to the name of the part, uh, a dash and a greater than symbol and because it's broken over here you have a question mark. So let's go ahead and open that and take a look at that a little bit uh, better. Um, the F key fits it within the screen. We still have that uh, part, it's a little bit easier to read over here. This uh, feature now also which is was design in context uh, which makes a part design in context up here. Uh, you have these uh, missing relationships in here. If we go into the sketch, you can see uh, what's going on here. We had a on on edge relationship in here that's no longer there. So we can go in here and uh, delete all these relations and maybe reestablish that. But what you're going to do when you break those connections is you're still going to see either that question mark or an X. So one way to break that, if you right click in this thing and go to list external references. It gives you the ability to either find these external references and reestablish these, or we can break them or lock them. And if we go ahead and break them all, uh, what it does is it takes care of all the external relationships that used to be here, but you still have the symbol over here, which can, can kind of trip up people. Uh, still got the in-context in uh, symbol over here, plus an X, which means it's just been broken. And I believe that you went ahead and saved this file and renamed it and continued to use it in other applications to still have that in context symbol in here, which sometimes is hard to get rid of. So that's, uh, that's one disadvantage of an uh, in context uh, assembly model. And we're going to go ahead and close these out. We're not going to save it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and discard, discard these changes. And we're not going to save that either. But the next model I'd like to show you is a uh, locomotive design I put together. So uh, this is called the Mercury Train. If we open up this assembly, this is kind of a hybrid of uh, the original design regarding the in-context relationships to other parts. What I did in here is I created a, uh, a part that simply sketches. It's called Train Sketches. And that's all it has is, is sketches in here. And what I did with these uh, subsequent parts I put in here, and I designed within this assembly the locomotive and the tender, Everything within the locomotive and the tender refers to these design sketches in the, the design sketch part. So the front sketch of the locomotive refers to the front sketch of, and makes references to the front sketch of the train sketches part up here, and so on and so forth. So if we were to open that up and take a look at that, you can see I used, uh, well, one thing that's notable is I generously used a lot of uh, sketch pictures in here in order to design these sketches in here. But if I return these sketch pictures off, or some of these sketch pictures off, 
And I'll do the same thing with the different sketch. I'm going to turn these off too. I'm just going to suppress them. Um, we can see that there's a relationship in here uh, with these uh, sketches. So the primary sketch I use, and the only reason I'm bringing this up is we're going to be using something very similar in some of the um, uh, solid body modeling we're going to be doing. It's uh, very, very much driven by sketches that we're going to be putting into the part. And then I call them design sketches again, but all the uh, uh, features within this part are going to refer to these design sketches. So I want to show you a little bit of how these sketches are related. Our primary sketch is a right sketch. It's got a lot more detail. It's got a lot more uh, dimensions to it. So I use it as my primary sketch. Then the second sketch I use is the front sketch. And you can see there's going to be some relationships with the front sketch over here. And shows the front sketch shows uh, you know the tender here too. There's a front sketch for the tender and a front sketch for the locomotive. But you can see the relationships in here. The very top of the front sketch is referring to with that uh, center line up here to uh, the very top of the locomotive. And down here where the cowling is, where some of the front uh, um, members down here and the wheels uh, down here too, are also referencing the right sketch here too. So that's important when you put this together. So we're going to discard these changes and go back to the assembly. And you can see that the assembly environment, as I mentioned before, all the sketches within the parts of that assembly are going to be referring to the train sketches in uh, this part. And another way of doing this is just a third way. Uh, the first way being that you have all the parts within the assembly referring to other parts within the assembly, which can be kind of tricky and hard to track. Or you can have all the parts in the assembly refer to a, a part that is nothing but sketches within the assembly at the very top of the feature manager design tree. That's uh, the other way. But the third way is to take all these sketches out of here, out of this part, and actually make them part of the assembly, which... Uh, uh, I call, still call it design sketches, but SOLIDWORKS also calls them layout sketches, and you can use those in that manner uh, in regard to driving all the parts within the assembly. So that's what I wanted to show you in regard to in-context assembly. As I mentioned before, we're going to use something very similar in regard to setting up these design sketches within the part environment. And then within the part environment, we're going to have solid bodies, and with these solid bodies, we're going to use those in uh, configurations which I consider kind of to be like uh, parts within parts. So join me for subsequent videos.